All right, we're going to start with quadratics just as promised. Whoa. You need me to slow down or you can't see or anything at all, just let me know. You may have to, if you're on the Miro board, you may need to zoom in or out on it to be able to see because I zoom way out when I'm writing. What's a quadratic? Yeah, it's a quadratic. Anybody? It's a what? A part of a graph. You can graph a quadratic. Tell me what else you know. Come on now. I know y'all know what a quadratic is. Or guess of what a quadratic is. We'll put can be graphed. That is correct. You would think it's four, but actually it has more to do with two than it has to do with four. What might be two in a quadratic? It's okay. No, don't don't feel like. Listen, I want y'all to be comfortable enough to say whatever. What is it? The exponent. You're exactly right. It has a the highest exponent in it is a two. And this exponent is on my variable. It's on my x. Since graphing was mentioned, that's what we're really going to be focused on. Does anybody have any idea what it looks like when you graph a quadratic? Say again? That's a, I think you're doing a cubic, is what that kind of looks like you're doing. Anybody? That's exactly, you know what that's called? A what? <laughs> it could go like this, but it could also go like this. So a line has a slope, a, per, ooh, God's sake. a quadratic graph does not necessarily have a slope, but it looks like that. Do you know what that's called? It starts with a T. Good guess. It's a type of polynomial, actually. <laughs> this is called a parabola. And I know y'all have heard that word before, haven't you? No, all right, let's talk about some parts of a parabola and then I'll show you how we're going to, what a quadratic equation looks like and how we're going to graph it. Give y'all just a second now. We'll just start with a parabola that's opening up to start with. So let's, in fact, let's put it on an, coordinate plane here. This will not be exact. This is just a sketch just so we can kind of let's say this is this is a terrible parabola but just pretend. Let's say this is my parabola. Tell me some things special about a parabola that you notice looking at it. That's exactly what I want you to say. It's exactly the same on both sides. Do we all agree? What's a geometry word we could use? Symmetrical. You're exactly right. It is symmetrical. Good job. So if I cut, if I had this line, I could kind of cut it in half. What's that line called? An axis? What kind of axis might it be? This is the y-axis, but what is it called? What is the line called that cuts something in half like that? Use this word. An axis of symmetry or a line of symmetry. You're exactly right. And like a line goes on forever, a parabola goes on forever, but it's different, right? It's going on forever in the same direction. Do you agree? It could be up or it could be down. So what's different about this than a line is that I have this special point that I never get lower than. It's got a very low value, right? Or if it was going the other way, it'd have a high value. This point is very important for a lot of reasons, and it is called the vertex. So I want to talk to you for just a minute about the vertex and what all it does, because it does several different things. So the vertex is also the maximum 
or the minimum, depending on if my parabola is going up or it's going down. If it's going up like this, what is it? It's a minimum. It's a low point, right? Um, it's also the point. where my graph changes direction. What do I mean by that? If you were tracking along this graph, right, I'm getting lower and lower and lower. Do you agree? I'm going down, 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 down. This is the point where I stop going down and I start going up. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So my function changes direction at that point. It's a very, very critical point. Um, let me think of what else. I think that's it. Do you guys remember how to reflect points? In other words, if I gave you this point and you knew where the axis of symmetry was, could you reflect it? This distance has to be the same as this distance, and that's where that point would land on this side. Just as, like if there was a mirror there, it'd be the same on both sides. Um, one more thing, the vertex, the axis of symmetry. Oh, symmetry. Always goes through the vertex. Everybody good so far? All right, so I told you yesterday, coming out of Algebra 1, you should know linear functions left, right, up, down, backwards, forward, every which way you could, right? And when you graph linear functions or when you work with linear functions, you remember that there's multiple ways you can write them. There's multiple ways that you can write the equation of a line. There's multiple different forms. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? There's slope-intercept form. What's another one? That's the one I wrote. Standard. There's standard form. There's one more that I hope you know. What is it? Point slope. Exactly. That's my favorite form. It's the easiest. It's the easiest to write the equation of. It may not be the easiest to graph them, but the easiest to write the equation of. Well, just like a line has different forms, we can write the equation. So does a quadratic graph. Okay. So we're going to focus today on standard form. So let me show you what it looks like, and then we'll we'll bring this back to the graphing. I promise. Don't get thrown off by all the variables because they all do something and we're going to talk about what it is that they do. So it's kind of like standard form of a line, right? Standard form of a line is AX plus BY equals C. So this is a little bit similar. But I think we'll talk about what each portion does and then we'll start graphing. If any of these variables are missing, well, if A is missing, I was meant to say missing because I'll say missing. If A or B so it looks something like x squared plus x. What's the value of A and B there? One. Now, if the whole term is missing, then it's zero. Okay? So if A or B is missing, then it's one. Whoa, come back, come back. If the entire term Is missing. So maybe I have x squared plus 5. What am I missing there? Which term is missing? x squared plus 5. Your big golly, what is wrong with you? The b is missing.
think this might help you. Let's do this. Let's do a couple where I, I show you a couple of equations. You tell me A and B and C. What is A there? Close. Negative 2. Don't forget to pick up that negative. What is B? Which one is it? Is it 1 or 0? Why? Why is it 1? It's there. There's this imaginary 1 that sits in front of every variable, right? If there's not, an, if there's not a coefficient. What is C? Negative 6. I'm intentionally throwing you tricky ones to see if you. What's A? What's B? That was good, by the way. Zero. What's C? See what we're doing here? What's A? Ooh, what does that mean? Is this a quadratic? No, why? It's not. <laughs> what is it actually? You know this. It's got a slope, so this is the equation of a, a line. It's in slope intercept form. This is a line, not a quadratic. So yes, A is zero, but really there is no A and B and C that way because it's a line and not a quadratic. I was trying to trick you. All right, can everybody in here find A, B, and C if I give you the equation? A is always hooked. We, we call this standard form the exponents. We're in order of the exponents here. So you always want to make sure, even if I've mixed them up a little bit. So if I said 3x minus 5 plus 7x squared, is that still a quadratic? Yes, but it's not in standard form. In standard form, I always want my exponents to be descending. So I really would want to rewrite this as 7x squared plus 3x minus 5. But still, my a is 7, my b is 3, and my c is negative 5. Does that make sense? Y'all sure? If it doesn't, tell me. This is kind of a long lesson, so if y'all need a break, let me know. All right. Let's talk about what these variables do then. A does two things to my graph. The first thing that A does is it tells me if my graph is going to be up or down. Now, we talked about that. Remember that quadratic, it could be both ends going up or both ends going down. So here, if A is positive, everybody understands that A greater than zero means A is positive, yes? If A is positive, then I'm going to have a parabola that opens up. But if A is negative, guess what happens? It goes down. That's the first thing A does. A does one more thing, though, and this is the most confusing one. And we're going to do a whole section on function transformations where we will talk more about this. But for right now, I'm just going to kind of give you a, a little simple, easy version of this. If I look at the absolute value of A, what does absolute value mean? If it's positive. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, just look at A. The bigger A gets, the more my graph shrinks in and gets skinnier. So 
So it's kind of the opposite of what you think would happen. So that's why I said be very careful here as you look at this. And so then as A gets smaller, if I'm talking about absolute value of A getting smaller, so I can't be negative, what am I talking about here? What kind of numbers are really small but they're not negative? Fractions, decimals. Less than one is really what I'm looking at here. So as A gets smaller, my graph gets wider. Sorry. I'm going to give you just a second to copy that down and kind of take that in a second and then I'll show you. No, I keep saying wider. I'm not going to write this. I'm going to just talk to you while you finish. But the standard, the average normal parent graph here is a value of 1 when A is 1. So that's kind of what I compare it to. I say is it bigger than or smaller than when A is 1. So 1 would be your average um, quadratic graph. Everybody okay? Nobody's got smoke coming out of their ears yet, so I'm assuming y'all are okay. Well, y'all got to loosen up a little bit, just a little bit. Y'all can smile sometimes. It's okay. It's not that bad, is it? My goodness. Let me show you three graphs. Tell me what you think you know about A on each one of these. Look at the first one. A is very small, so I think the absolute value of A is probably small. What makes you think that? The graph is wide, right? That graph is pretty wide. What else do you know about A there? It's positive. How do you know it's positive? It's going up. Easy enough? How about the second one? It's negative. How do you know? Because it's opening down. What else do you think? Do you think A is big or small? Why? It's skinnier. How about the last one? Positive. Because it's opening up. And again, A is probably getting pretty big. And we're not comparing this to a whole lot, but just in general, just kind of get the feel for it. Everybody okay so far? Can I move from here? Y'all still right. All right, I told you all three variables did something. I'm going to skip B for right now because it's, it's a little bit harder than the others, and I'm going to move to C. If you had to guess what C might be, what might you guess? Think about the equation of a line. Think about slope-intercept form of a line. Close. Think again. Think about the line. What happens? If I've got mx plus b, what happens to that number that doesn't have a variable on it? That's the y-intercept. Why is that the y-intercept? What happens at y-intercept? I hope y'all know this. I'm making y'all think today. What happens to all x's at y-intercept? Is this a y-intercept? What are the coordinates of that y-intercept? 2, 0? Zero? 0, 2. So it gives x, y, right? What are the coordinates of this y-intercept? What are the coordinates of this y-intercept? What happens to all the x values at a y-intercept? They're zero. Do you agree? Have y'all ever had to find intercepts algebraically where you have to plug in zero? To find the x-intercepts, you plug in zero for y. To find the y-intercepts, you plug in zero for x. And that's why. 
So if I come here, if I were to plug in zeros for these two x's, what happens? Zero times anything is zero, and it just leaves me with that one on the end. That's why this is the y-intercept. Does that make sense? I don't like to just tell you what it is. I like to tell you why it's what it is because I feel like it helps you understand it a little bit better. All right, so let's talk about B and then I'll give you a little brain break. You knew it was coming because I told you it was a very, very important part of the graph. What part is that? What's a very, very important part of a quadratic graph? The vertex. The vertex. We can do a lot from the vertex. This is what we're going to use. It's not going to give us our vertex, but we're going to use it to help us find our vertex. A vertex is in the form of a coordinate, so it has two parts, right? An X and a Y. Do we all agree? Okay. The X part of the vertex, we're going to use this B to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the opposite value of B, now, I put negative, but I said opposite. Why would I have done that? If it starts as negative, what happens? It becomes positive. So I don't want you to always think it's negative. I want you to think it's opposite. So opposite B over 2A. That gives me the X part of my vertex. And since the axis of symmetry goes through my vertex, this is also the axis of symmetry in equation form. Now, if you have the x value of a point on a function and you need the y value, what do you do? If you have a line and I told you what is the point when x equals 5? What would you do? How would you know where to go on y? In other words, okay, let me give it, let me be a little less vague. Let's say I had y equals 2x plus 3. And I said, if x equals 1, what is y? What would you do? Plug it in. Just put 1 into x, right? That's how you find the corresponding y value. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take this value and plug in to find y. Plug into what? Plug into the equation that I started with. This will make a lot more sense, I think, whenever we do it all together if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. <sighs> I'm going to give you a second to take in, take a brain break, take two minutes if you need to run to the bathroom real quick, run to the bathroom. I like to break things up. I can't sit here and stare at something that long, so I don't expect you to either, but let's just take if you get confused. It will take us a while to get through the first one graphing, but that's because I'm going to run you some steps alongside an example. It will not take you that long to graph them on your homework for each one, but I hope to get through at least two examples with you, and um, then I will shut up and let you work. All right, let's graph them. To graph. Oh, my computer's lagging and I'm writing the letters on the twice. Standard. Bless you. So we'll do steps on this side, and we'll run an example over here.
as you guys are writing that down and getting ready here, um, tell me what you expect to happen with this graph. Just looking at the equation itself, tell me what you might expect is going to happen without doing any math. Just looking. It's going to what? It's going to open up. How do you know? That very first A there is positive. It's going to open up. What else do you know? You should be able to tell three things right off the bat. Which way it opens? The y-intercept is 6. It's going to cross the y-axis at 6. Give me one more thing you know. Skinny or wide? It's bigger than 1, so it's getting bigger. So that's going to shrink it in some. Okay, so it's going to start shrinking in. It's not a really big number, so it's not going to be super duper skinny, but it is going to be a little bit shrunk. A little bit skinnier than normal. Does that make sense? This is what we did there. All right. The very first thing that I would do is I would list A, B, and C because it's going to make your life a lot easier if you have those listed out. And I know that that sounds very basic and very easy, but if you do that, it will help you. So I'm going to come here to my example. I'm going to say, okay, well, A is what? Two. What is B? And C is six. This is the hardest form to graph in. There are three forms we will learn to graph in. We'll do the other two tomorrow. But this is the hardest form to graph in, just because there's so much. Nothing's given to you, really. All right, step two. We're going to find and graph the vertex. So this is a little bit of a longer process. How do I find the vertex? I have to find x first. How do I do that? Opposite b over 2a. I use that little formula. It's just a little formula. And if you've listed your a and your b and your c out here, well, that's a really easy step now, right? Opposite b, positive 8, over 2 times two. So that would be two. Now that not just gives me the x part of my vertex, but it also gives me what? The axis of symmetry. That's the line that's going to divide my parabola on both sides. Okay? It's an imaginary line, but it can still help me in graph. Now, because a vertex, I need two parts to graph it, right? I need an X and a Y. I've only got the X. How do I find the Y? Plug it in. If y'all don't like the steps like this alongside an example, you can let me know. Some students like it, some don't. I like to have a step two that I can go back and go, what do I do again? Oh, yeah, this is what I do. So I'm plugging back in, always going back to that original equation, okay? So y equals, every place there's an x, I'm replacing it with 2. So 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 6. Yeah? Watch your order of operations here because that will kill you. When I'm simplifying this, do I multiply first or do I square first? Why? Exponents, right? PEMDAS, exponents come before the multiplication. So I'm going to square it. In this case, it's not really, it doesn't really matter because they're all two, but it won't always be like that. So 2 times 4 minus 16 plus 6. Eight minus sixteen is negative eight, and negative eight plus six is negative two. What are the coordinates then of my vertex? Two, 
two, negative two. Remember, go back to what you started with. So my vertex in this case is two, negative two. So let's go ahead and graph that and let's get that on my coordinate plane. This is where if you have graph paper, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay too. All right, so I'm just going to go two, negative two. I'm going to put a point. You might want to put a little V there so you know that that's your vertex. But I am also, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do just a light dashed line here so that I remember that's my axis of symmetry. That's the line that I'm going to be reflecting over. Now remember, I should be opening up, and I should be a little bit skinnier than a normal graph. So make sure you allow yourself enough room wherever you, wherever you are here. All right. I only have to algebraically find one more point. The other point I'm going to find geometrically. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I need another point. I'm going to call this an easy point. Now what I mean by that is I want to pick an X that when I plug in, it's going to make it easy for me to find the Y that goes with it, okay? This is usually close to the vertex. So if my vertex, and this is an X value, if my vertex starts at 2, an easy value to plug in might be 1 or 3 on either side of the vertex. Okay? The reason it's easier, if you think about how a parabola goes, it starts getting really big really fast, right? So the further I move away from that vertex, my numbers are going to start getting huge and they'll be harder to graph. So it'll be easier for you if you stick close to the vertex. Okay, what would you suggest here would be a good easy point to pick? One. I would probably do one here. Again, when I pick the X, I have to find the Y that goes with it. And to do that, I have to do what? Plug it back in. What am I plugging back into? The original equation. I'm always going back to that original equation. So this time y equals two times one squared minus eight times one plus six. Exponents first, so two, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 8 plus 6. What are the coordinates of that point? Y'all can do this. The x is 1, the y is I'm going to go ahead and plot that. Bless you. One zero happens right here. That is just an arbitrary point on the parabola. It could have been any point I wanted it to. Can you think of another point that would have been easy from that equation to use? What else? What else do you know? What did we know from the very start about that equation? We knew which way it went, we knew skinny wide, and we knew the y-intercept. Is that a point on the parabola? Sure it is. And if it's close enough to the vertex, you can use it. And you can use that so you wouldn't even have to do any calculations. 
In this case, the reason I didn't use it was because it was it's kind of far away. It's getting further away from the vertex, and it's way up here, and I would have had to extend my graph so far. But you could have used it. It's not too far away to you. All right. <clears throat> Any guesses? Now, this is, this is half of a parabola right here, right? I can see what it's going to do. It's going to come up like this. What do I do to get the other side? I need something to connect it to. Reflect it. You're exactly right. That's all I'm going to do. I caught this as my favorite step. I call this the reflect and connect step. So again, to reflect this, if there's one unit of space from here to the axis of symmetry, I'm going to make sure there's one unit of space this direction. And I'm just going to connect. And there's my parabola. I'm going to start these going around. If you will take three for your group and then pass it to the next group so that when we finish, everybody if you want one, these are just, I typed up the steps for you um, for graphing. It's worded a little bit differently than what we did on here, but just so you have a clean copy. Um, and there are things to keep in mind at the bottom. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then we'll run through the example together on the back. And I'll be done. What do y'all think so far? Not too bad? Does this, does this problem have a maximum or a minimum? A minimum. It has a minimum because it has a low point. Um, but just again worded a little bit differently, but this is nice to keep up with so as you go back and you study and things if you want to reference this you can. Things to keep in mind at the bottom a little bit. I wrote this whenever I taught CT actually algebra 2 so it's it might be worded a little bit easier to understand for you. If A is positive, your graph is happy, so it opens up. If A is negative, then your graph is sad, so it opens down. Sees your y-intercept. But just a couple of, of little helpful tips as you graph. So let's flip it over. There is, the first one is worked out for you all the way through um, from start to finish using the steps provided there. So let's work out the example, and let's see what happens. One half x squared plus two x. Tell me what you know. Okay, we'll do a, b, and c. So what is a? What's b? What's c? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you know about the graph. It's big. It's going to be wider. How do you know that? It's a fraction. It's getting smaller, right? A is getting smaller. It's going to widen my graph out a bit. What else do you know? It's opening up because it's positive. One more thing. Y-intercept is zero. If the y-intercept is zero, that means I'm at the origin there for my y-intercept. All right, what should I do first? Find the vertex. To find the vertex, I need to find the x part first. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Opposite b, so negative 2, over 2 times a. Don't let fractions intimidate you. Fractions are our friends. Let's work the bottom there. Let's work that denominator first. What's 2 times a half? 1. So I get negative 2 over 1 which is negative 2. Not only is that the x part of my vertex, but that is also the axis of symmetry. How do I find the y part? Plug it in. Negative 2 squared. What happens when you square a negative number? It becomes positive. So negative 2 squared is positive 4 
half of 4 is 2, so I have 2 plus negative 4, which is, what is my vertex? Negative 2, negative 2. We will go ahead and graph that. Put the axis of symmetry through. We'll do this one instead of finding the easy point. We'll do this one with the um, y-intercept so you can see how you could use that. This one's pretty easy to use the y-intercept since it's zero. I'm not too far away, right? I can put the point at zero, and I've totally eliminated that, that step of having to calculate an easy point and plug in. doesn't always work out that easy, but sometimes it does. Now what? I've got the vertex, and I've got an arbitrary point on my parabola. What should I do? Reflect and connect and be done with it. One, two. One, two. Reflected, connected. Does it have a minimum or a maximum? A minimum. Let me just give you this little piece of, I forgot. It has a minimum value. Anytime you say value, you're talking about the y. So it has a minimum value of, well, this is the same thing, of negative 2 at x equals negative 2. So if you ever ask for the minimum value of a function, and they do this on standardized tests all the time, um, what's the minimum value of the function? You always tend to want to do x, but it's not x, it's the y value. So the, the value of the function is the y value. All right, that's all I have for you. Your homework is already posted for you. It is numbers in the um, attached document there. You will have numbers 21 through 31 on. These are not calculator problems. So you can use your calculators to do the arithmetic there, but don't use the calculator to graph the quadratic and then just sketch it. So I need to see your work for your points, right? I'll need to see your work for your vertex, your easy point if you're not using the y-intercept, and then your just reflecting connect.